All right, for what it seems and not what it seems, this ties in a little bit with a trade that just happened with Milwaukee and Tampa Bay. So the Brewers got Willie Adamas and Trevor Richards from the Rays, and then the Rays get uh, reliever J.P. Fireson and Drew Rasmussen from Milwaukee. So we can touch on that a little bit. I want to go a little bit into Willie Adamas now. So he, he came from the David Price trade, if you remember. He was like the main piece from that. So people forget that. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I mean, it was, I felt like a lopsided trade, but still like you thought he'd be better than he was, but so 41 games this season, he's been 197, 625 OPS. I mean, last postseason he had 136, no homers, 41 OPS. His last full season, two years ago, he hits 254, 735 OPS. So, and then in his two games so far with Milwaukee, he's had two RBIs, two for six. But so, is he what he's seen? What it seems is this the player he is? I'm I'm saying his the player he is right now is not what it seems. I think he's more so the 2019 version of himself. Um, you know, I think again, Willie Adams has the energy of like. Anyone, he could match anyone's energy in the league. He is a great hype up guy. Um, I think doing bad last postseason really fucked him this season because I think that's still in his head because of the Rays losing the World Series. I mean, think about it. If you're the starting shortstop for a World Series team and you're hitting 130, you hit 136 in that postseason, is that going to weigh on you or what? Like the next season, yeah. especially if you lose. Like if you win, then it whatever, but like they lost the world series. So I think that's part of the reason why he's doing so bad this season. I think getting a change of scenery is going to help him because now he doesn't have to think about letting the Tampa fans down as much because he's got a new fan base. Yeah. Um, plus again, he had 20 homers in 2019. I was going to say, I leave that part yeah. out. Yeah. So 20 homers again, like, 52 RBIs, a lot of those homers may have been solos, but it depends on where he was hitting in the order, too. I know sometimes he hit leadoff. I think sometimes he may have hit towards the bottom as well. Um, and he's proven that he's durable. Last season, he uh, he played in 152 games. So, I mean, in 2019, he played in 152. So, right. that's almost a full season. I mean, that's only 10 games off. That might have even been a 10-day IL stint. So, he might have played every day that he possibly could have. Yeah. Um, Plus, he's great defensively. Um, he can pick it with anybody. So, I think um, I think he's more so the 2019 version of Willie Thomas. I agree. I think he'll probably get back to that. He's probably about like an average shortstop. I feel like he's not yeah. gonna be a star. He's also he's only 25. You know. Exactly. That is again. That's another thing people forget about him. Even myself. Like I didn't know he was only 25 until I looked it up the other day. I was like, wow. Yeah. Like, when I saw the trade, I was like. Wow, so he's kind of getting up there, I guess, but he's not, bro. He's like 25. That's young, dude. Yeah. Um, and like you said, he ain't going to be in that tier with like Story, Baez, Lindor, but he's a decent big league shortstop. And every, again, everyone also, think about this for a second. They have Wander Franco coming up pretty soon. True. Race. He's a top prospect in baseball. He's going to be better than Adamus, most likely. So that was the biggest reason why they shipped him out. Yeah. I think, I don't think it was even because he was like doing, I don't think they cared. I thought, I think they believed he was going to pick it up anyway, but Franco is obviously going to be a stud. So uh, they needed to make some room and they grabbed those two bullpen arms, man. Whenever bullpen arms go to Tampa Bay, you've seen this. I've seen this. They oh, suddenly yeah. blossom and become stars. That's so, their shit. They love that. Um, so yeah. yeah, they got some new openers now, however they want to use exactly. them. So, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe he picks up a little bit in Milwaukee. But yeah. moving on, much. the Minnesota Twins are tied with the Orioles for the worst record in baseball right now. At the time we're recording, they're 17-29. and 29, Last place in their division. So what's going on there? Is, is that <laughs> who they are? Man, uh, this is a tough one, I got to tell you. Because that division's better than we thought. I mean, the Royals have kind of dipped, but they're still ahead of the Twins. Yeah. Think about this. The Twins are ahead or behind the Tigers right now. That should put things into perspective. Yeah. 
I'm going to be honest with you. There are some things happening there that don't look good. Um, some guys getting on the IL. Cruz doesn't seem to be the same player. Not that he's doing bad, but he can't carry that whole team. Sano no. has been horrible. Sano has been horrible. Uh, I think he's batting like 140 or some shit like that. Um, I think that this is what it seems, to be honest with you, this season. Mm. They can always turn it around, but it just doesn't look promising. I mean, it wasn't even looking good before Buxton went down. No. And he was playing at MVP level. I mean, you think about it, like, we talked about Kalame a lot, too. He's been bad. He's not even in the closer role anymore. Right. Um, you know, I don't think Angleton Simmons has been great, the new signing that they had at shortstop. Um, I think they, there's, like, one, one stud kid. Uh, you know, remember Alex Kirilov? He debuted in the postseason last year against the Astros, actually, in game two because someone got hurt. And then he's been pretty good this year. Him and Cruz have been pretty much carrying that team. Donaldson hasn't been amazing either. I don't know if he's battled any injuries or not, but I don't know, man. Their starting pitching hasn't been great. It's just – it doesn't – it looks like a mess over there, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I, I I kind of agree. I, I feel like it, it's kind of what it seems. I don't know if they'll finish in last, but I don't know what's going to turn it around. I guess Buxton could come back and get hot. Cruz could right. kind of pick it up. I guess, like, maybe I mean, Sano could. I, I just – I kind of feel like that's asking a yeah. lot. There's, like, some guys there that definitely could turn it around. Like, Max Kepler is another one who hasn't been great. Um, Jorge Polanco hasn't been great. You know, I mean, but you think about these names I'm saying, a lot of them are, like, former All-Stars or, like, former great players. Like, yeah. Mitch Garver, their catcher, too, was, like, a, a silver slugger two years ago. Like, they have players that are good. Obviously, like if Donaldson and Cruz and Sano do what they're supposed to do, they're as powerful as anybody. But like right now, their pitching is a mess. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, man. I, I think they would have to make some drastic trades or something to change everything around because it just yeah. seems really distant right now. I agree with you. I don't think they'll finish in last because let's face it, Detroit is not good. But, yeah. you know, the Royals improved. The White Sox are good you know, the Indians are going to pitch. So Mm -hmm. it's going to be a tough division for them. Yeah. No, definitely surprising. But yeah, yeah, I mean, they got a couple of guys back. We'll see. And then next up, we got Gavin Lux here in LA. So now that Seager's hurt, he's like getting his first consistent playing time at shortstop. That was his natural position in the minors. And since taking over that role, he's been 385, Two homers, which are both grand slams, of course, and then eleven twenty one OPS. So, what do you think yeah, of him, man? <laughs> he's what it seems. Are you kidding me? This kid's a stud. He just literally has needed playing time. I think he got called up in like two thousand eighteen, and he's been like on a yeah. bench. He plays every once in a while. He's never consistent, but like he was their top prospect. I'm pretty sure for a while now. And like we've said about the Dodgers, they just have these guys. They just keep calling up these left-handed hitters that are just amazing. And, um, you know, obviously second base can be viewed as an easier position than shortstop. But if you never really played it and you've just played shortstop, it can be tough. And that can affect your hitting because you're thinking about defensive things. That could have been the issue with him earlier in the season. He wasn't doing great when he was playing second. He was pretty much the starting second baseman. But now that he's the starting shortstop, you really are seeing him come into his own. I'm curious, this, I don't know this is an overreaction. Do you think, let's say he finishes up the year, he's like a pretty solid shortstop. Do you think that affects them resigning Corey? Or at least like the price that they're willing to go? Dude, I mean, it's hard to see Corey Seager in another uniform. Yeah. Let's face it. The Dodgers have a lot of big contracts there right now, and they're going to have a lot coming up. And more coming up. Mm-hmm. Like Bellinger. I mean, they have bets right now. I believe Walker is not signed. To yeah, yet. he's not. They're going to probably re-sign Kershaw. Will Smith is going to have to get a contract at some point. Mm-hmm. I mean, in a perfect world, they re-sign Seager and Lux is amazing at second base. But in a world where you have to worry about financial constraints, I could see them letting him go depending on how Lux does these next three to four weeks until Seager comes back. Because – if he performs at a Seager type level like he is right now, I don't know, man. I, I mean, he's obviously going to get paid less than Seager would. So 
Yeah. Again, it's the Dodgers we're talking about, so they don't really give a shit about money, but still. no. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, at the moment, I, I feel like they're still going to end up re-signing Corey. But something to think about, especially with how much he's gotten hurt, if yeah. let's say he doesn't, he comes back and he's not playing at like an elite level. I don't know. Sam, because yeah. he's going to want a contract as big as as big as Frankie, as big as Tatis. So, if not bigger, yeah, I don't know if he deserves bigger. Obviously, Seager's a great player, but yeah, but they all want to yeah. outnumber each other. That's exactly. like when Lindor exactly. got like the one million more than exactly. Tatis. So, I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. Um, you never really talk about like a guy replacing someone else on the Dodger roster, but you never know. 